hey guys, someone just dropped off this lawnmower at my garage store, and they want to see if we can repair it. They said it will start, but not stay running. So let's hang out in the garage a little bit and see if we can get it to run and work good. Based on the brief description they gave me, I think I know exactly what's wrong with it. So I think the first thing we'll do is just pop the spark plug off, drip some fuel in there and see if we can get it to fire. And if it'll stay running, that'll be easy for us. And if it won't, then we'll go ahead and drop that fuel bowl and see if we can fix something in there. Pop you up on the tripod there and we're gonna go ahead and pull this spark plug. These, these ones make it pretty hard to get off. Got a long screwdriver, let me see if that helps us. Oh, yep, yep. So we'll grab a spark plug wrench and we can pull that off and see if we can get it to fire. Alright, I found the right size. Put that on there. Don't go away. See if it'll focus on that. Doesn't look, doesn't actually look too bad. Mm, pretty new. I assume this lawnmower is only a couple years old, if that. Looks a little wet, so I don't know what's going on there. But I guess we'll just go along with our original plan drip some fuel in the spark plug hole, and it should be good. Alright, so I have a syringe full of gasoline, and we'll use that to fill that up a little bit with fuel. Alright. Should be good. So now we can put the spark plug back on there. It just needs to be half tight, finger tight, you know, it doesn't need to be anything crazy. I don't remember it taking this long to get off. Alright, so just get that a little tight in there. Okay. Get that boot back on there. Whack. There we go. I'll set you up on the tripod and see if we can get it to fire. Alright, so... I think that's what he was saying about how it would start but not stay running. Someone decided to make these metric... Dang it, Briggs and Stratton. Effort. Pop off of there. Okay. Without too much effort. Oh, there's another bolt. What? And this one's standard. Oh, there's two more. So half of them are metric and half of them are standard. Okay. If any of y'all out there work at Briggs and Stratton, leave me a comment and explain to me why you did this. Because I'm very confused. Oh, 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 oh. Goes, alright. Okay. Oh, it doesn't have much of a bowl at all, but, you know. So there is the choke plate. I think it said it had automatic choke. Let's see. I don't see anything there, but, I mean, obviously something has to happen, so, you know, whatever. And pop that fuel bowl off somehow. I don't know how you do that. Oh, okay. There's a nut right there. I'm gonna get that fuel bowl off and see what we can do. Alright, I finally got the carburetor off. It took me about 30 minutes to realize that it just slides off, this style does. Oh, it's dripping fuel. <laughs> 
It doesn't look like very good fuel either, so assuming that's the problem. Bad fuel in the car. So I'm trying to look around for a way to open it without spilling fuel everywhere. Let's zoom you out a little bit. Uh, sorry, this is going out of view, I think. It almost looks like it should just pop off now. I don't see really anything else. I'm gonna put this underneath it just in case it blows up. But it could possibly be. Oh, there's some more disgusting fuel. Yeah, what I'm actually gonna do is put a syringe in the intake. Maybe try to catch some of that nasty stuff that's coming out. Oh man, look at that. Can't really see it well, but look at this. It's all deep. Oh, gross. Okay. Oh gosh. It's going everywhere. Look. That is some nasty dark yellow. I don't want to see that ever again. So, guess I'll just screw this into the tire with me. It'll be fine, right? And it's still dripping. Right, I think this thing in the back might have to undo. I apologize if you hear a lot of airplanes in the back. There's a lot of those new F-35s flying by. Testing out, they're really loud. I'm just gonna try very carefully to not break it. Oh, there we go. Ah. With the black bowl, it's hard to see. What if I can grab the flashlight on my phone and you can kind of see it now? That's there's particles in there, it's nasty. I think we found the problem, so I'll just clean this up a little bit, get some maintenance, and it should be good to go. So we are going to give this an old-fashioned carb clean. Just the standard, you know, so... Yeah, this is a very different kind of carb style than I'm used to seeing, so, you know, whatever. Get that pin out of there. that. Hopefully enough that I can get the float out. Pop this up maybe. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. The float is out. Oh, there goes the needle. The needle has its rubber. This is the one with the rubber tip. It's in pretty good shape. It's not like flooding out the engine or anything. That's good. See, there's those airplanes. They're so loud. Okay. I'm trying to figure out how this, this carb style works. I have a rag, clean it up. I would put this in the ultrasonic cleaner, but it's plastic, so I don't think it's gonna do anything. So, you know, whatever. Here you can see the automatic choke system. So when the engine is in the off position, this is going to be like this because the governor is not acting on anything yet, but once the it starts revving up, then this piece will push on this when the throttle is opened, and the this the choke plate will get opened up by the governor. So that's how the automatic choke system works, for any of you that are wondering. One thing I'm wondering is how this jet system comes out. I'm 
trying very hard not to break anything. But I have no idea how this, this works. You know what? <laughs> Blow through it a couple times. cleaned out. Usually sometimes... Oh, I can't do that on this one. I have this kind of spring here from my governor under Predator 212, and I, sometimes I like to take the this thing and just kind of put it all the way through up to clear out the emulsion tube or anything like that. But I think I'm going to put this back together real quick and we'll see if it fires up. Alright, so I got it all put back together how I found it with the car all put back together. I'm going to hold on this lever and see if it'll fire. I hope it does. Ooh. I'm going to top off this fuel tank here. Possibly drip a little bit of fuel down the spark plug hole just to get it started. Okay, so I'll trip a little bit of fuel in the spark plug hole and put it back together and then we'll see if we can get to fire. Alright, I just put some fuel in the spark plug hole and I'm hoping it'll fire. <laughs> and it died again. So I'm going to do a little bit of diagnosing and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so I took the car back off, and I took it completely apart, and I drilled out the jet just a tiny bit, cleaned it all up, blew it all out with the air compressor, got all the dirty gas out of it. We're gonna see if it can fire again. Sorry, I'm super tired. Um, so I'll pull this lever down and we'll go to fire, see if it works. So I'm going to just take this off camera and run it for probably the better part of a half hour just to make sure it's running good. So, see you guys in a minute. Alright, so I just got done running it for probably about 30 minutes and it didn't stall or die at all. Well, I mean it did once, but that was when the clamp slipped off here. But, I'd say it works nice. So I'm going to return this to the original owner. And I just want to thank you all for hanging on the garage and fixing this up with me. There'll be a lot more of this coming since I'm doing small engine repair this whole summer, so subscribe to see more stuff like this. Alright, see you in the next one.